Okay. We're recording. Okay, perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you guys for being on. Clay is on vacation in Florida in watercolor, my favorite spot, and he's jumping on from vacation. So appreciate you being on while you're on vacay. Um, do you have a mustache? Interesting. I'm, I, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not used to you with that. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, okay. You know, Hannah uh, said, you need, to, you need to have your mustache. And I was like, I've been waiting 10 years of marriage for you to tell me something like this. So <laughs> we're all in. Hey. So you got it. Okay. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, okay guys. So thanks everybody for being on. We, um, I heard, I was on a mastermind with Gary Keller last month and he said, we were talking about trainings and he said, I don't understand why you guys aren't teaching people how to make a million dollars. Like why, what can you do to get some people to do some hacks, to let them make, do tactical ways to make a million dollars. And I thought, okay, that's easy. Um, that's what we'll do then. <laughs> so I think this might be a new panel that I start messing monthly. Um, but when I, when I thought about people that were absolutely crushing it, um, and have a proven track record of success yet also even just over the last year to two years are continuing to grow their business and, and really do it in, in different unique ways. Um, I immediately thought of the, of the panelists today and, um, everybody has a unique kind of different way that they, that they do business. So I'm going to I'm going to ask everybody a couple of different questions, but my goal was that we would have really just kind of tactical ways to give you guys ideas. I know people love ideas and I, and I always love when I go and get to get some really good ideas. So I'm going to have, um, Robin's going to talk about dominating in a small town and database and really honing in and touching on database. Roger is going to talk about like owning where you live, um, not, not owning, like actually owning where you live, but owning crushing, selling, dominating where you live, all of the above. Yes, Phil, data bank. Thank you. Yes. Um, and or if you aren't in a building, like what he's going to talk about, think about it as your neighborhood. Um, and then Jeff is going to talk about, I call it like business to business. Jeff, is that what you call it? Yeah, business to business and basically just the macro to micro of the building blocks of a stream of income on supplemental income. Yeah. Yep. Love it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Everyone always gets a ton from you when you share. So thank you. Clay is going to talk about um, development and moving from not only selling real estate, but developing real estate. And one of the things we've heard Gary Keller talk a lot about is buying land and getting into developing and all those sorts of things. And then when Ken hops on, um, he had he had an appointment, so he can't be on until 1.30. So he's going to go at the end, but he's going to share about um, niching yourself, niching. I say niche. I'm from the country. Sorry. Niching Roger. You probably say niche, um, into, uh, YouTube and, uh, social media and marketing. And that's going to prove to be more important than ever. I think many of you are already feeling like that. That's not an option anymore. <laughs> um, you have to do it. Um, but he's going to talk a little bit about that. So, uh, I figured we might do, and then if we have time, if we have time, I want you guys to hear from them, but if we have time at the end, I'm going to talk about, um, the who's that you're around and being in business with the right people to make money. Um, I figured we go ladies first, Robin. Are you good to okay. go? I'm good to go. Okay. Perfect. Things. Just tell me when to shut up. <laughs> So Robin's upstairs and I'm downstairs right now. So hopefully we won't hear any, any sort of echo. Um, but Robin, tell them a little bit about yourself, how long you've been in the business and your production, and then we'll go into the rest. Okay. I have been in, oh my gosh, this is bad. I can't remember my production off the top of my head. 17 years. And we did, I think 57, 58 million last year. Um, I have myself and five agents and five and two admins and 65% of our business year over year is repeat referral. So we pour into our people over and over. I feel like when I got into the business, like I was grasping at all the different straws. And then I realized I'm like, I have a whole bank of business right here. So the more we pour into our, our business, our sphere, our repeat referral, like the bigger, the faster we grew. Yeah, I would say, and you guys are well over a million GCI over the last yeah. three years. Um, and individually, you you still do a good a good portion of the business with a high GCI too. So I do, do fifty percent. That's probably too much, but I still do fifty percent of our business. No, 50, I think fifty percent actually is a is a mm -hmm. good sweet spot too. Yeah. Really good sweet spot. 
Um, okay. So share with us a little bit about if you were going to, about the touches and about going deep with your database, because you def- definitely do it. One of the best of anybody that I know. We do. Um, and you know, I was thinking about that. I said, I talked to my admin and I was like, we really don't. We, I went and typed this up this morning and I was like, oh, what we realistically have is we have a 72 touch plan. Like I know everybody says a different number, but when I looked at it, what like we truly do, I can fluff up the numbers is 72 touches. Um, we do, we're old school. We do a ton of mailing still and people respond to that. Like literally last week I closed out a property and they were like, yeah, even though we moved to South Carolina, you were still, you still kept us on your mailing list. And when we decided to come back, like it wasn't even a question. We just came back Mm -hmm. to you. So even though people move out of state, we still pour into them and we still reach out to them with our different, um, (laughs) our different touches too. Um, We do, um, we do magnet calendars, we do, and I know all this is really generic, but it's honestly, so I have said the word, and I don't know if anybody else has done this, but I have said the word normalizing like over and over again. I'm like, the market is not crashing. It's normalizing. It's normalizing. I keep explaining that. I probably said it 20 times in the past week. And I think right now is the time that you really, really have to be consistent with your touches, with your database and with your people. Um, Can I, should I share my screen? No, I'll just share my 72 touch plan at the end. Um, But I feel like- I would love for you to share it. Will you you share, will you just go through a couple of them real quick? Yep. So we start out, we've got monthly postcards. We do. And the big thing is you need to find, like, you need to be genuine. You need to be yourself. Like you can't just go, I had somebody call me the other day and said, Oh, you've got a boomtown website. I feel like I'll be successful if I have a boomtown website. No, like that's not what makes you consistent or successful. It's what you consistently do, what's genuine to you. And so I love recipes. Like I have several people on my team that are bakers and um, cooks and like those things are really, that's genuine for us. And if I I sent out things that just weren't genuine to us, it wouldn't work and nobody would respond to that. So I do monthly postcards, just like home tips or recipes. We consistently do that every month. Um, We do a monthly newsletter. And the thing about that is we always do something in value. Like we just watched an awesome state of the market Dave Ramsey video and we're sharing that in our newsletter this month. We're embedding that that in our newsletter. Um, We are doing, yeah, we do uh, magnet calendars. We do sports calendars with our local hometown team in it every year. We do, um, we still do, I don't know if anybody else does this, but like if we have a closing with you, we're gonna like do a nice little letter and send you your uh, Alta statement at the end of the year. That's just another touch, it's like a freebie. Um, We do a quarterly text or a call. So that's four touches there. Um, We do quarterly giveaways. And of course we try to grow our social media via those quarterly giveaways. And we just try to do um, something with a local business. Like we are all things local. Like we don't try to go outside of, we don't give away Amazon cards. We don't do that. We try to go to all our local businesses that support us. And we do those giveaways and we get a much bigger response from that. I love Um, We always, yeah, we're all things local. Participating in local is like the biggest thing. Cause we're in a town of like 30 some thousand people. We're in a college town. So if I'm going to do 56 million, I got to touch like a lot of those people (laughs) because we don't have that many. Um, And then my big thing, our touches, the ones that work better than everything is our events. Yeah, we have, I think the the best event, we have a pool party, which is probably our biggest um, coming up and we're collaborating with a local ice cream truck. And so we go in. We create a Facebook event for like when we decide six weeks out that we're going to, this is going to be the date we've reserved it, everything. We create an event six weeks out on Facebook. We invite all of our clients and then we send out a postcard. So there's two touches right there. And then we go in and then we kind of release building up um, like anticipation. We release, oh, week five, we're going to say, oh, we have a popsicle truck or an ice cream truck coming. And then week four, we say, oh, Apollo's pizza is going to be the food that we're serving. And then we say, oh, we're giving away water guns. And so we kind of build up and that's just a reminder, hey, respond. 
and we've got, um, I think 50, some families and we're still two and a half weeks, three weeks out. We're still three weeks out. We've already got 50 families committed to that. Robin, so, Robin yeah. a couple things on the events really fast. Cause people always yeah. ask these questions. How, how often are you doing events? We do. Well, we've changed some things up this year. We do quarterly events. We do four to five a year. Okay. Um, and then we've started doing micro events and we've had a great response with the micro events. Um, cause everything isn't for everybody. Yeah. So we have created a, we've gone into our Facebook. We did this a long time ago and have a group that is just our clients. Right. So then we go through and we create polls and say, which would you rather do? Would you rather watch a movie? If you'd rather Love watch that. a movie, what would you rather do? Um, we had, we did a local baseball game and 36 people said, yeah, we'd rather do that. So we invited those 36 people. And then if those people didn't want to come, we went to like our next little people that were on rotation. So, so we've done micro, smaller, more intimate event. events. Okay. I was going to say, so the micro event might just be maybe 50 people or less. Correct. Okay. Correct. 50 people or less. And so at the pool party, we usually have, we can have a maximum of like 1200 people, I think. But wow. I mean, that's, you can't really go deep on those events. It's just fun and chaotic and just exciting. Um, but our smaller events, we can really go deep. People really appreciate those more. We ask them to tag us and everybody. We feel like people are a lot more grateful for those smaller events. Um, some other ideas are we did, um, we did smaller movie events. Like we, when, when pan, we were coming out of pandemic, we had, I think you could have 20 people in a movie theater. So we had five families per movie theater and we bought them these big giant bags of popcorn. And like you would have thought it was Christmas for those little kiddaboos oh. and they will never use anybody else. And we have, I probably have a group of 30, 30 clients maybe that have all friends and they're all related and they just keep sending. And I got a listing last week and they said, oh, well, we wouldn't use anybody else. I mean, like we want to come to your events. We want to like be a part of that tribe, that community that we've kind of created. So it's pretty I cool. I love that. Yeah. Okay. You have, a couple questions. you have a couple of questions really fast um, about how many clients or how many names do you have in your 72 touch? How many people are you in your database doing the true 72 touch to? Probably we have about 800 names, past clients, um, and probably we're really getting a hold of four to 500 of those consistently. Okay. Yeah. And we're yeah. probably reaching more of those, but four to 500, of those are actually paying attention. Yeah. Well, and I know you have a ton of more people in your database, but they get like dripped on and not the specific mailing. That's just specific. past clients. Yeah. Right. Just past That's clients. just past clients. Correct. We sent out okay. for our, our pool party event, we sent out 690 postcards. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yep. And then are you, is the Facebook group different from your business page when you're doing the events? Do you actually, you, do you have a separate Facebook group? Oh yeah. We have a, we have a Robin Jones group event so that we can create or not event, but group yep. closed group so that we can create polls because we discovered pretty quickly that that's the only way that you can create the polls. Yeah. And I get love the polls like we it. want them to be able to participate because we don't like I think I know what's best for everybody. And finally, I had a humbling moment when I went, oh, wait, I don't. Like, I need to know what they really want us to do instead of just throwing a bunch of money at it, praying that they like it. Because yeah. we were like, oh, we'll have a picture event. But nobody wanted to come. Like, nobody cared about that. So yeah. I was like, hmm, well, maybe I should start asking. So, and yeah. that was, that's been gold. Yeah, I love that. Okay, and then what do you use for your database management? Are you all in on Boomtown? All in on Boomtown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to see. Oh, do you set aside a uh, time pre post to connect with the attendees or is it more informal when you do the movies? Do you, are you like talking to everybody or is it more informal? Are you setting aside time to connect with them? It is more informal. We're all there. We set up, we hand out their, um, we hand out their tickets we hand out their popcorn vouchers and our drink vouchers and so it's more of just a meet and greet at the beginning we ask everybody to come like 20 30 minutes early so we have that time with them and and it actually finding a, an amazing photographer is kind of hard in a smaller town but um when we have had photography that is like amazing and it gives you an amazing reason to follow up with you know 
Yeah, because we did action pictures. Yeah. And I'll tell you another event, and I'm this wasn't what this was supposed to be as events, but that's what I'm most passionate about. But my other favorite one was a pumpkin patch one. And what we did, and I love this so much, is we did um, pumpkin patch and we told everybody, we had like big uh, raffles. We had a Blackstone that we gave away. We had oh, yeah. um, gift cards. We had all kinds of fun stuff to give away. And we would announce those kind of building up anticipation. And we said for every canned good that you brought for God's outreach that you got a raffle ticket. So people were rolling in there with cases and cases and we had 150 people um, and we were able to donate about a thousand items to God's pantry. So as a give back and it was just such a cool thing. And I could have gone and just bought those canned goods, but it really was just a cool awareness thing too. And people just got into it and were so competitive and it was very, very cool. People are still asking and talking about that. So it's cool. Love that so much. Love it. Love it. it. Yeah. Yep. Love it. Okay, Robin, um, anything else that you wanted to share that you didn't get to share? And then would you care to watch the chat? Cause I think people are still asking questions, but I got to move, yeah, move on yeah. to the next. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, I could keep on, keep on. I think my biggest thing is like, if you don't have a database, Um, and you're like, where do I get these people? Like, you really just need to figure out who you are and what's important to you. Like, think about like what your favorite client thus far has been and like build a profile around them. Where did you meet them? Why did you like working them? Um, what, what kind of job did they have? What kind of hobbies do they have? What kind of hobbies do you have? Like, look for common things that you have and then start, just start building your database at database. And, um, and like, Cause I feel like a lot of people are like, well, that's great that I can do those things, but where do I get the people to touch? And you just have to kind of build a profile and go deep with who you really connect with. I think that's super important and be consistent. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Stay around. And then yes, people okay. are asking for the 72 touch plan. Yep. So I don't we'll know if you out. have a way of putting it in the chat or you can send it to me so and pretty. we'll send it to everyone. That I Good had job. Like it all you. pretty and can. <laughs> that <was beautiful. laughs> thank you love it love it okay if you have any more questions for robin put them in the chat and um and she'll stick around and, and answer some of them the thing about robin is if you walked upstairs into her office right now you're gonna see like presents and baskets and branded everywhere. stuff everywhere it's literally everywhere because all she does every day is like drop this off at somebody's house or i'm going to take this and leave it on their front porch or i'm dropping this off for a client that i haven't talked to she's su- super purposeful with going deep on her database and really not spending very much money on anything else other than that to to create a massive massive business i mean yeah. almost 60 million in a town of richmond kentucky you guys is yeah. insane well- can I say one more thing? Yes. I am purposeful and this is ridiculous, but I'm purposeful about everything I do. Like I go into the grocery store and I'm like, I'm going to talk to five people. Like I go to the gym and I'm like, I'm going to talk to four people. Like I just set goals for everything. I'm very competitive, <laughs> but everything is very personal. Everything has a reason. So love it. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Clay, I know you're on vacation. Do you want to go next? So you can probably get back to the splash pad. <laughs> I mean, you're twisting my arm, but yeah, sure. Can't miss that. Okay. Clay, talk talk to us. Um, yeah, Robin, you're going to get some more questions, I figured. So if you don't care to type them in the chat, that would be great. Okay, Clay, you were one of the first people that I really knew that I want you to tell them a little bit about yourself and your business and where, where you are and all that stuff. Clay and I went to high school together, by the way, um, and uh, in Lexington, and then he moved to Nashville, Tennessee and has a tremendous business in Nashville. And the Nashville market hasn't sucked lately, has it? <laughs> it's amazing. It's like crushing it. Um, so tell them a little bit about your business and then how you kind of ventured into the development part of it. Well, Dana, first, let me just say thank you for having me on this panel. I think what you're doing is incredible and the team you're building and all the stuff that you have going on is really amazing. So. I want to say that Thank you. Uh, I, I moved to Nashville in 2003 and, uh, and I've been here now uh, 20, about 20 years before the boom. Uh, got into, re- was in construction first, got into real estate after that uh, and was kind of just a solo grinder type, just would work hard and, and um, set a goal, achieve the goal, you know, until it started to wear on me. Yeah. Uh, I actually reached out to Dana 
And I said, I was actually where you are. <laughs> I was in watercolor. And you, when you called me, I remember. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, who do I call? I was like, I am making a lot of money and miserable. And so I called her and she said, do you have a coach? And I said, I don't need a coach. I was like, I don't, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm not, I'm fine. I'm doing it, you know, whatever. And she's like, so let me get this straight. You played basketball in college and you had all these coaches and teammates and now you don't think you need one. So it was a wake up call to me. So long story short, I got hooked up with Adam uh, Roach, who I'm sure you guys know. And um, he and I have been working together for about three years. But prior to that, I had, I had, um, you know, I got out of construction, got into real estate sales, and I really just, just felt more in tune with the, uh, with the construction side of things. I mean, the uh, kind of have an operations background, operations mind. I just really love the process, start to finish, could sell, was having success selling, doing, doing all that, but really just found the value there. And so uh, I remember one day I just came home and I told my wife, I said, I really want to, you know, at the time Nashville was, um, or I guess this was probably 2012. So we were coming out of recession type stuff. And in Nashville, we have a lot of, we have something called, we have a market called, it's an infill development market. So we have a lot of established neighborhoods, a lot of established communities in town where people will tear down houses and build new ones. Mm -hmm. And so I was keeping my eye on this and I, I told her, I said, I really want to get involved in this, this industry, you know, and. What was your production around that time? Do you think? Um, in 2012, I mean, I don't know, not much, not much. <laughs> it wasn't much. Um, I would say it was low. I mean, my production didn't ramp up until, I don't know, probably 2016 or so. Okay. Okay. It was low, but I set the intention that I wanted to do that. I communicated it to my wife and she was like, you know, she's, she's like, all right, I'm just going to pray you meet somebody. And I was like, okay. So literally that day I met somebody, a builder, and I didn't really know how things worked or anything. I just wanted to get in. I met somebody at the mall. I was waiting outside of the Apple store, waiting for something. And it was just one of those moments followed him to a house long story short i've been i've been working with that guy for 10 years selling his projects um he was the first person i ever partnered with on a on a development deal um and so kind of my segue into it i guess what i'm trying to say here is that you really have to know what you want yeah and you really have to know who you are and i like what robin said where she's like if you're not if it's not genuine to you, it won't work. That's true in everything. If you know who you are, okay, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm a believer. I believe that we're, you know, God's greatest creations and we have all of this power inside of us. If you know that and you know what you want, there's really nothing that can stop you. And this is how it works. When I, when I wanted to get an infill development, it's all I thought about. Mm -hmm. all day. That's all I thought about. I would notice everybody's signs going up. I would notice what they're paying for. I'm deep diving at night into seeing like what the margins are. How are people setting these things up? And I'm just all day taking this information in. And what happens is I think as your awareness opens up, you know, there's opportunities out there for you and whatever you want to do, but we're just usually not aware of it because we're kind of, we kind of have our nose down, you know? Uh, so getting with Adam helped me pull my nose up a little bit, but I really wanted to, I really wanted to do this. And it was amazing how the opportunities just come into your, they seem like they come out of nowhere, but they don't, you're just aware, you're aware of them for the first yeah. time. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how, how I got started. Uh, there's much more I could say about it, but I don't know. You got to well, show. What, so what was your, like, how did you partner on the first one? What, what did that look like? Okay, so the very first deal that I ever did, I purchased a piece of property and I had no partner. <laughs> I just was like, I was like, this is a good piece of property, bought it. And I'm like, okay, now what do I do? So for a year, I tried to find somebody to partner with me. And my goal was to find a builder that I would partner with. Yeah. Um, 
I would forego my commission. He would forego a builder's fee and we would just split the profit. Just a very yeah. simple, like redneck Eastern Kentucky, no offense <laughs> to Eastern Kentucky. That's where I'm from. So I'm saying it, but that's just kind of like what I, I was like, it's easy. Let's just do it this way. And so um, it took me about, I don't know, a year because I really wasn't super intentional about it, but I found somebody, we partnered on it and um you know, we sold the house and it was in Oak Hill in Nashville. We sold it for like $1.2 million and we made a $200,000 profit and split it. Mm -hmm. And this was in 2014 or 15. And at the time I was thinking, I just, I remember, I'll never forget selling that, like the amount of fun I had doing that, selling it, closing on the deal, getting the money and looking at that check and going, man, I would have to sell like three and a half million dollars of real estate to make this money. And I just did it yeah. in one deal and I had so much fun doing it. I was like, yeah. I'm doing this, you know? And so that's kind of the, that was kind of the starting point. And now, I mean, we've developed now, you know, I, I have a business partner. We co-founded a, a group called Boulevard Nashville here in, uh, in the city. And we do infill development and we do like luxury single family. We do, mostly in town stuff all the way up to 10 to 15 unit flats and condos. So, um, yeah, that's how it started. Okay. So that, so really quick. So my next question on that is what does it look like today? Because are you all doing like commercial? Are you just sticking to residential? Are you just building new construction? Are you buying what kind of land are you looking for? Any answers you can give to those? Those are the common questions I get. And if you guys have any questions, type them in the chat. Well, I, yes, and I know we, we stick with residential, but let me just answer that question this way. I, I know why those questions come up because I've had those questions. A lot of times that kind of stuff comes up um, along with it, it, it pro, almost procrastination. It's kind of hard to figure out, like, if you're anything like me, it's like, I want to take the right first step, not just a first step. Yeah. Uh, I would just advise everybody to pick something they like and go for it because opportunity abounds in every one of those areas, commercial, residential, multifamily, yeah. rentals, whatever. You have to find the thing that you really are into and then just pursue that and don't stop. And I think that if you do that, then you'll, you'll be on that path of success and you'll, you'll reap those rewards a lot faster. If you fall into kind of like, what one of my mentors calls the knowing doing gap where it's like, man, I, I know what I can do. I just have a problem doing it. It's usually because there's some things in your life you're dealing with, either it's fear or you're, you're afraid of what other people are going to say, or maybe there's a, a risk that feels like it's too big to take, or maybe you just don't have yeah. enough information or whatever. And you just like, you just keep swimming in the same pool and really you just need to get out and go the direction you want to go and believe and trust that things will you know, open up for you. And I promise you they will. Um, I know a lot of agents are on this call. So one thing I would say, the best thing, if there is some like piece of like just help or advice or whatever I could give in this is, is find the thing that you, you know, if, if it's just money, money's great. But if it's, it has to be something that's a worthy goal, like something that really like yeah. motivates you, inspires you to go after Robinson's, I mean, you know, her office apparently looks like, you know, Christmas, a right. Christmas. Yeah. So it's like, obviously she's moved by that event planning side and that, that she's inspired by that. So it's not hard for her to do that. You know, she's almost drawn to the success because she's, she's in the mode that she's, she loves. That's all you have to do is find that path. You'll learn as you go. I mean, I did. Um, you don't have to know everything. But an easy place to start if you're an agent is go, just go find a deal, figure yeah. out what people are paying, like go look at deals that have sold and find out what they paid for it. Get together with the builder, figure out what things cost per square foot to build, reverse engineer what those profit margins are and figure out what people are making in your market on these deals they're doing. Yeah. You know? And then set a standard for yourself. It's like, I want to make this much on a deal. And then, then that will help you find a piece of dirt or a house that you can tear down or something at, a, at the right price and then go for it. Go yeah. for it. I mean, when you sell that first one, you'll be like, man, this is great. It's a great way to supplement your commission income. Yeah. And it may 
it may be something that you realize, you know, you want to do full time. Yeah. Okay. So you might have to answer a question in the chat, but I do have, will you, will you share it like humbly a little bit if you, cause I know your heart. So I don't want, I know you're going to probably have a hard time sharing, but like, what are, what is today your business look like real estate versus development? Well, um, so I put a bullet in my real estate business's head earlier this year. <laughs> um, we have four agents that work with us and then, so they're all still producing but personally, I decided I wasn't going to sell anything else unless it was something that I built. Um, so this year, the commissions things looks a little weird. Um, yeah. But, you know, we did set a goal this year to do, we wanted to do five, three million dollar gross sales deals. So we wanted to have 15 million dollars in gross sales on the units we were developing. Yeah. Um, which, you know, part of that's because our, our business partnership's a little new. We kind of um, that was not necessarily a super big goal for us. We were just kind of like, Hey, if we do this, then we can survive this year. We're, we're kind of, you know, and, yeah. and be happy. Uh, well, in the first three months we had already acquired, you know, four deals that were worth $20 million in gross sales. Wow. So we were hoping to do about 10 units. We've got 18 units coming out of the ground in the first like four or five months. So, um, but then are you selling those, Clay? Is your team selling them? Yeah, yeah, we'll sell them. We're all licensed. So we've got, we call us the big four. You know, we've got the, the four agents, but we've got me and my business partner. Uh, and then we've got uh, two others that work with us, uh, uh, our, our marketing chair and our kind of like team admin. And then our, we have an acquisitions manager, which was, right. you know, who that we needed to add as things came along. And that's his only, only responsibility. Um, and then someone just said in the chat, I love this clay. Someone just said in the chat, you're creating your own inventory and that's very accurate. Well, you know, okay. Secret sauce. I mean, that was right. They always said, if you're not listing, you're losing Yeah, and I, a better way to list than just <laughs> build them. You know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> From that listing. So, um, anyway, yep, yeah, I love that. totally. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And if you don't care, if you guys have any more questions, type them in the chat. I think you have one in the chat, Clay. Maybe you could respond to um, just okay. so at time purposes, I can move on. But and um, if anybody has any questions on the development, I anticipate us continuing to get a lot deeper into this, um, especially as top real estate agents. And And I love exactly what I don't know who, who KW Silicon City is. So thanks for being on. However, I love what you said, create your own inventory because that is, uh, that's exactly what Clay has done. And at this point, developing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate um, is, a, is a different game. And I believe what I do believe what we're hearing about buying dirt um, and, and continuing to develop, I think it's going to be a huge, huge part of it. Let me just answer this question out loud because- yeah. Uh, I think it would be good for everybody. It was asked, what kind of competition did you have when you started as well as now? And how have you differentiated yourself, differentiated yourself and competed successfully with them? Um, it's funny because I didn't know what competition I had. <laughs> uh, currently, I'm not aware of my competition. I, I just give no mental thought to it, honestly. And the way I differentiate myself is I add value. I, I just have a belief that if you add that there's a law you kind of in this world that if you add value, value will be returned to you. Do what you want to do, do what you love and add as much value as you can in every aspect of it. And, and you'll be fine. You just said something. So after this, I'm filming a video um, to talk about my, the, the quote that I kind of follow my life and my business by and Clay, now I have to read it because you pretty much just said it. I have no clue who Vesta Kelly is, if anybody knows, but this is what she said. Snowflakes are one of nature's most fragile things, but just look at what they can do when they stick together. Think of what believers could do if we partnered together. Instead of being jealous, territorial, or easily threatened, what if we became dangerously generous with our resources, our ideas, and even our organization? That's and right. I'm like, I'm like, that's it. Like, that's it. Just do that. That's it. That's great. Well, uh, one more thing, and then I'll sign off. Much you get, but I mean, uh, creativity. I think is the opposite of competition. Yeah. And if you're they're being creative, using your higher faculties that God gave you to go make something that is amazing, uh, then, you know, you're adding something. And if you add something, you'll always have enough. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. 
Thank you so much, Clay. Thanks for All being right. a part of it. All right. See you. Thank you. Have a great time on your vacation. Thanks for being on while you're there. Um, yes, I'll share the quote again for sure. Okay. Who wants to go next? Whoever. Roger? Sure. Okay, cool. Okay, Roger. So we have a running joke. Roger, um, I'm not going to tell you guys how much. However, I think Roger made more in one month than I know most people ever have <laughs> this year in one month in the month in the month of June. And he is absolutely dominating his condo building. So tell them a little bit about your business, um, and then I can fire away some questions too. But you just have I like just love what you're doing. Okay. So I have been in sales for nine years total now. Um, I have a team of six. Um, we're right at about 31 million right now for the year. So hoping to end up in that mid to high 50 range. Um, what I have done in the past couple of years, just um, kind of decided that, you know, I wanted to be in, um, you know, a niche market myself. Dana, I think we actually do say that the same way. Okay, I was just getting ready to say. I, okay, be I feel better about myself. You actually say it, so hopefully that's <laughs> correct. Um, but I wanted to be in, um, you know, so I moved to this condo building um, that I really Downtown love. Columbus. In. Yep, downtown Columbus in an urban neighborhood. And, um, you know, I had lived in a neighborhood called Victorian Village before, and I had farmed that area really, really Hard, you know, just farmed it regularly, um, you know, because the way I look at it is like the place you live is like the, why wouldn't you farm there? It's like the easiest people see you there. It's like free marketing. You're, you're already there, you know, so people already are familiar with you. Um, so I have done what I call like a hyper focused marketing. And um, for me specifically, that is in my building. I live in a development again in downtown Columbus um, that consist of three buildings and about 200 ish units. Um, we're at a, you know, there's a, a great price point, you know, 500 plus. Um, and so figured it would be a really good market to, you know, hyper focus on. So, um, you know, how I've done that was, um, you know, focused all of my marketing, all of my efforts, everything you know, that I do from a marketing standpoint to get business here is focused around you know, my building specifically, um, you know, and for people that don't live in buildings, just your neighborhood, um, yeah. your marketing should be very specific to your neighborhood. Um, you know, everything you do should be very specific, very hyper focused to the, you know, this area. And that's what I have done in Park Sedge. I, um, all of our postcards, all the stats, everything that we send out is specific to this building. Um, you know, I, I get postcards myself from other agents that talk about the general Columbus market. And it just makes me laugh because I just look at the stats and I say, that does not apply to any of these people whatsoever. Our downtown Columbus market is so different than the market two miles away in Upper Arlington, um, night and day. And neighbors will stop me in the hallway and say, is this accurate? You know, I got this postcard and um, you know, I'll just tell them, no, you know, it's not, if you're curious about it, let's chat, you know, um, and all of our marketing again is very, very specific to this building in this neighborhood specifically. So the stats that they're going to see on our postcards are, you know, what's happening in this market very specifically and not, you know, other neighborhoods across the board. So I'm really, again, I call it my hyper focus, you know, so I'm really focusing specifically on a very small area. All of my farming is targeted toward this area. Um, so again, my stats are very specific to the building, to the neighborhood. Um, all of the things that I'm marketing are, you know, the most recent sales in the building, um, new listings, things like that. It makes it a lot easier because you're really able to kind of just hone in on an area versus being very broad in yeah. uh, marketing to a large area. So Roger, okay, a couple of questions. Um, when you started, did you just start farming to all 200 or how, did you start with a smaller amount or what did you do when you started? So when I started, truthfully, I started organically, you know, living here, being a realtor, um, yep. met some neighbors, um, which again is why starting where you live is a very easy thing to do because again, it happens organically. You know, you meet yeah. neighbors, you get business from that. Um, but yes, I have always targeted directly to Park Sedge specifically. 
So everything I have sent out has always been very intentionally geared to Park's Edge specifically. You know, if I send out a letter, it's neighbors and I reference Park's Edge and I reference that, you know, if we haven't met yet, I'm your neighbor. You've definitely seen me around with my three dogs, you know, <laughs> all the time with my three dogs around here. So everyone knows me. Um, and I'm always sure to just make it very specifically about Park's Edge. And again, if that was your neighborhood, you know, and it wasn't a building, um, just being very yeah. intentional and very specific with that neighborhood. You know, Park's Edge is in a neighborhood called the Arena District, um, which consists of a lot of other buildings and a lot of other things. But again, I'm going even more, you know, we have yeah. this market of downtown Columbus, then we have the Arena District, and then we have buildings within the Arena District. So again, hyper focusing on a very, very specific neighborhood or building, not all of the arena district, because again, even those are different. Yeah. Okay. So um, a couple, well, gosh, I have so many questions. So what are some <laughs> of the best things you've done to touch, like what's worked the best besides just living there? Because I know you do your Christmas letter. Of course. Yep. So a lot of things, a lot of it is relationship based. And I, you know, as you know, real estate is a relationship based business, um, you know, for this building, it was built by a developer. They were all built in 2017. Um, Nationwide Realty Investors, NRI, built this development. They have an in-home, an in-house sales team that did all the sales. Non-licensed agent that sold all the sales. So that sold them all originally. So I formed relationships with these people. Yeah. You know, Erin was the rep that at NRI every time someone reaches out to her, which naturally they do, because she was their guide from the start to finish process for building these out. You know, every time someone reaches out to her, she says, listen, I'm not a licensed agent. I only do new development sales. Talk to Roger. He's your oh, neighbor. Roger. He does all the sales there. So that was one of the first things I did. Again, it was organic because I worked with her when I build my condo. So it's, you know, so I had that relationship and I made a point to build it. Um, you know, in our case, we have a doorman. So I made a point to, you know, and naturally, I mean, not just made a point for sales. <laughs> I obviously, you know, got to know our concierge and our doorman. And I'm sure that, you know, and made a point very intentionally to make sure that they know, you know, I'm in real estate, I handle the sales here. If anyone, you know, has somehow gotten past you know, any of my marketing and has no idea who I am, if they mention that they're moving, please mention my name. So I've made a point to make relationships with those people. You know, it would be the same in a neighborhood if you had like an HOA. Right. And if you mentioned to the HOA president or HOA board, like, hey, just as an FYI, you know, I am a realtor and very, you know, I, I obviously live here and, um, you know, I'm very aware of the markets, you know, for this specific neighborhood and would love to help anyone that has questions or is looking to move or anything like that. Um, and it's kind of a fine line because, you know, you live here and you don't want everyone to see you as just, you know, being salesy because, you know, that was my like, next question was, have you ever felt weird? Like they live right next, like down the elevator, you know what no, I mean? Because I have made, yeah, I'm social, generally speaking, anyhow. So I've always gotten to know yeah. Um, neighbors and people anyhow. And so um, it's never felt too salesy for me. And there's the fine line. You don't want your neighbors to feel uncomfortable. Um, so I've always made a point to make them aware, but I still have, you know, regular daily, you know, in passing conversations with people and all of our marketing that goes out is not always intended around sales. So we will market, you know, if there's events or things like that happening in the neighborhood, you know, where we live, every race, every, you know, heart walk, red, white, and boom, every major event, they close down every street in our neighborhood and we can barely get out of our garage, you know? So um, sometimes, you know, some marketing could be geared around just making people aware of what's going on in our neighborhood this weekend. What's, you know, things like that. So it's not all focused around, look what we just sold, you know? Um, now that is, we do include that, you know, so that is included in the marketing. We make sure everyone knows of, you know, recent sales, new listings, current inventory, the stats, you know, all that good stuff. And are you touching them with that? And are you mailing it? We are mailing it. Yep. Because again, I don't want to like cross the line of like dropping it in their mailbox or leaving it at the front desk. Um, regularly. I mean, every sale we make a postcard and at this point we're closing, you know, two to 
five a month here. Yep. Um, so we're, you know, every sale we're marketing. Um, it's a little bit easier again, because um, I live here. And that's, again, kind of the, the nice thing with farming where you live is you get in these natural touches where you don't have to send something. They see you in the hallway. You can stop and have a conversation. Um, you know, an added benefit for me is that I have three dogs. We are literally in and out all day, every day. People see us constantly and yeah. we have small talk with everyone. And um, it's just really, it, it's made it really organic and really easy to do. So a couple quick fire questions. And then yeah. if you have any more, if you guys have in the chat, um, you can definitely type them in. So you, you moved there in 2017? Yes. Or I guess, okay, so my question, that was five years ago. So I think when people hear farming, they know oh. it's kind of a long, but yeah, 18, okay. They know it's kind of a long-term play. So from the time you started marketing until today, how long did it take before it really started to show up? You know, I, I would say probably a year. Okay. A yep. very, very consistent marketing. And that is probably shorter than most. In yeah. Victorian Village, it was much different. Um, because it was a large neighborhood, there were a lot of agents working in that neighborhood already. Um, given the fact that I lived here and that we are a building, so I do think that it makes it a little bit, um, you know, there's, we're a little bit more friendly. Um, we yep. have common areas that we hang out at. I see the, all my neighbors in the lobby, in the garage, at the pool, at the park. Um, you know, I see these people all over the place. Um, yeah. So it did make it a little bit easier. Um, so I think, you know, that's, in reality, I would say it generally takes a little bit longer, but, um, they say, they say 12 to 18 months is the average. So I think yours is probably, and actually Felicia asked the question. That was my next question. What percentage of your business to now is actually coming from Park Sedge? So mine personally, so I have a team of six. So, um, I do, I guess at this point, probably 75% of our team's uh, business, I would say of mine, 95%. Is coming just from Park's Edge. It is coming from Park's Edge. And um, wow. that's also, you know, the nice thing is I've become pretty much the exclusive agent for the building, um, <laughs> which, is, you know, has been great. And um, it's funny because, you know, neighbors will reach out and they'll have a really good, they're getting ready to sell and they have a really good friend in real estate. And someone said to me a couple months ago when I sold their unit, they said, you know, we have a really good friend in real estate, but just like, transactions just can't get done in this building without you involved. And they totally, our friend even understood that, you know, <laughs> like our friend even said that, you know, and so we, we had to work with you. Um, and well, so you, you've done Roger, this is what I wanted everybody to hear. You've done what I keep saying month after month, you are the local expert economist there. Like they truly believe that no one can sell anything in your building as good as what you can sell it for and that's what and people can do that in neighborhoods that that is Felicia's exactly right that's the power of Felicia I'm gonna let you leave this next time because you're saying everything I'm saying it's the power of being hyper focused and that's what you've done and I mean we we joke that every every other day it's like Roger closed another million Roger closed another one a million Roger closed another million but it's amazing because it's like the fruits of the work that you've done in that I mean it's all it's all showing up and paying off and I think if they're, if they would rather list with you than their best friend, because they know you're going to get it done. Like it's, it's working. That's what being a um, local market expert is. And I mean, Ken, uh, hopefully Ken, I want you to talk a little bit about that too. When I come to you with that amazing lighting, I don't know what's happening, but I mean, I'm getting on Amazon to order lights like today, as soon as we're finished. Um, I'm going to have them in every office, um, but it, it does, it totally pays off. And that's, that's what you've done. Yeah. Love it. Okay, Roger, I do have to move on, but I, you have about a handful of questions in the chat. So will you go through and answer those in the chat pretty please? Yes, absolutely. Is there anything you wanted to say that you didn't get to say that you would give them advice about? Um, I don't think, or maybe, okay. So just one last thing is just being very, very, you know, obviously you're marketing to this small area. You need to, you know, be the actual expert. So, you know, for, for instance, in my building, um, if someone says, you know, my unit number is 413, I know exactly what layout that is. I know the square, you know, yeah. so know the models of your, of the homes in your neighborhood, know the rough square footages, know, you know, the builders, know the information. Yeah. Um, you can't act as an expert and then not know anything. So yeah. you need to be the expert if you're going to sell yourself as an expert. 
Yeah, love it. And awesome. Just be consistency with everything. I know that uh, Robin said that, but that's like the one thing I have starred on my uh, sheet for talking about is just consistency is key. Whatever you do, do it regularly. Yeah, love it. Will you say also, will you type in the chat just the like quick um, premise of your Christmas letter? Because I know that that's been such a big thing too. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you, Roger, so much. Thank you, You're thank welcome. you, thank you. Thank you. Love and adore you. Um, Jeff, you want to go next? And then Ken, you can close this out. And guys, we might run 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes past. Sorry. So um, we'll we'll be kind of quick with it. Oh, my gosh. And Ken privately sent me the lighting. Woo! Is that what it is? I'm ordering it. Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, Jeff, I've interviewed you before about this. And everyone said, share the lighting public, Ken. <laughs> Um, I'm getting, my messages are blowing up and now my text is too. Okay, Jeff, I have interviewed you before about what you do and people absolutely always have a bajillion questions. So thank you for coming back on and talking absolutely. about it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to stop me though and interject with questions because you know I'm a rambler, so. It's okay, I think we all are. I'll bring the meat though, so we'll be good. Thank you. Okay, take, take it away. Tell all them right. about you so and what you do. I'm an individual agent. I've been doing this for 16 years. Um, the big thing that really kind of brought this into fruition was a family member of mine died and we went to an estate attorney to go and basically handle all the proceedings of the will and so forth. Um, this was around the time of the recession in 2008. So the biggest thing that I was running into is how to create supplemental income or some type of guaranteed income without having to work as hard. Um, leveraging is very difficult for an individual agent, obviously. Um, I don't do well with um, big parties with clients. They get frustrated with me because I can't work a room that well. Um, but if you put me into an atmosphere where it's workable, it definitely can be done. Because I never like to talk in confirmation of like you can't do something. Yeah. Um, the big thing about that was, fortunately enough, it was a probate attorney, which means that you pass away without a will. If some of you don't know that concept. Um, everyone has one, obviously, in their states. It's an actual very lucrative business, and you would be surprised about 62% of people pass away without wills. So when you're talking about the amount of clientele that you can get from that, as morbid as it sounds, it is actually very lucrative. Um, so with that being said, he was fortunately to be the president of the Bar Association as well. So my whole thing was everyone was gravitating towards short sales and bank owns back in 2007, 2008. That was not my gig. I don't like to reduce commissions based off of that. And just the start to stop finish of that from closing, way too long to make income off of it. Um, so from there, I dedicated basically a year of my life of learning the probate process. I went to court hearings with him, sat in on client appointments with him. Um, for his standpoint of it, and any attorney standpoint, they don't make the money until the deal is closed, but they're also putting their client and their reputation in your hands. So the big premise behind that was I dedicated a full year to do whatever he wanted me to do. Yeah. So he molded me into this particular professional. Um, from there, he started because he was the president of the Bar Association, having a ton of events and inviting me to those events. And that is where I work the room. So from 2008, and I have some of the statistics, from 2012, I became an exclusive agent for 21 estate attorneys within the Columbus market. Wow. Um, from there, I then have now moved on to corporate attorneys, divorce attorneys. Um, and from the corporate standpoint, these are just people going to either patent something or put their business in an LLC and get business planning from there. Um, to multiple different genres of real estate attorneys. Right now, I actually just signed a contract with a law firm to be basically like their expert witness. So essentially when there's litigation, I go as a real estate representative, I get paid to do it, but also I am their exclusive agent for the entire firm. That's super cool. Yeah, that's something that just took place about two months ago and I've been working on it for about a year. So a lot of this, whenever I'm on panels, I always hear like, oh, this sounds great. You know, it makes it seem so easy. It yeah. takes some legwork, but I can tell you it will explode once you perfect one situation or one client out of it. So yeah. it's definitely achievable and it's definitely doable. Um, so from that standpoint, I average about 30 to 40 million every year. I will say that this has grown from the beginning years. It was about 20 to 30% of my business. Right now, it's about 40% of my business. Wow. 
Um, and this is what I really call a permanent or guaranteed referral network. It's something that I really do not have to work very hard for, but it is something where I have ABAs in line with attorneys because obviously they're very contract driven. Um, ABAs are just basically guaranteed contracts of service. Um, so with that being said, I have those with attorneys. And from there, I took this concept and I worked it with all of my service providers. So when it comes to estates, that's one portion of my business. About 15% of my business right now comes from just my accountant. So for tax purposes, anyone who wants to basically go into investing, I hit that network very well, or just personal residents where people are doing step up homes. I mean, the main concept of what they're talking about when you're basically doing your taxes, your home is always yeah. one topic of conversation. So all of my clients have ABAs with me that I work off of, and it's not necessarily like just feed me business. I'm not a proponent of that. It's very much you scratch my back, I will scratch yours. So with the service providers that I work with and with the attorneys, I guarantee them on average about 10 to 15 clients a year that they will get from me as a referral basis. And then Love I do that. not put a numeric cap on what I get from those particular attorneys or those clients. Um, it's just basically showing them that they will have a platform or a foundation of business that they will receive from me. And then I get basically the loyalty built in for guaranteed referrals and networking. Love Any that. So far, you just let me talk for 10 minutes and didn't interrupt me once. <laughs> it was so good. I was writing so much down. Okay. Um, Kelly, he kind of, he started it with just one attorney, um, right? That was, that was your friend, Jeff. So, yeah. well, that, that's actually a good question. If someone were thinking about, man, like I, I want to, I want to form a relationship with an attorney, be it a probate or a, a divorce attorney, you know, or whoever, um, what would, what would be the first step or what advice would you give them? Well, I hope there's no attorneys on this call, but work it like a prospecting appointment. It sounds like you're stalking. I do. I don't care. It is what it is. I have no shame in the game. Um, they will rank themselves on a monthly basis, just like we have in the Columbus market. I know other markets do top producer magazine. It ranks you off your volume. Um, yeah. It ranks attorneys off of their success rate and their volume rate. So if you want to start basically prospecting for attorneys in certain niche markets that do a good book of business or basically are very popular in their field. That's how you really should start that platform and then just nurture the relationship as best you can. Yeah. Love that. Okay. Um, do, do then, do those peak clients turn into referrals? Like, do you, then do you work them to get more referrals too? Yeah. So with estates, obviously it's a representative that's an executor to sell a family member or next of kin or whatever the case may be. But from there, they get into my database in terms of nurturing that relationship for their home. So I have sold for one particular client, 13 properties in the 16 years I've been a real estate. Wow. Agent. Um, so it's huge. The other thing you have to think about is it's like the ink block method. You make that dot and it starts to spread out. I then tap into the networks of these individuals as well. So yeah. it's not just a one-stop shop transaction. It becomes a client that you've just done one of the most personal investments, obviously at death, it's tough, um, but then you become their realtor and get that referral network from them. So I never do just a one-stop turn and burn transaction, it's always very purposeful in terms of where can I cultivate additional relationships from one individual. Yeah, love it. Um, Ken asked, are the websites national or local for the rankings or what websites were they again? You just go to like for ours, it's the Columbus Bar Association. So okay. Kentucky, they have their own bar website. You have basically the Rolodex of all the attorneys um, that are available there. With probate, it's public. The attorney who is appointed to oversee the estate, once the estate gets opened and it's recorded, um, you have all the information as to who you need to pinpoint go after at that point. Mm -hmm. My eyes probably look like I'm special. I'm looking at the questions just to make sure I can get back to people. I <laughs> to have all those questions, so I'm trying probably. to watch them too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, okay. And Kelly had a good question. What do you do? Oh, Rachel posted one. Thank you so much, Rachel. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what if they uh, don't want to just work with one realtor? What do you, what do you do or say? Um, I haven't really run into that. The biggest thing about it is when they mold you into what they want, I mean, it's very similar to my contractors. When they work under my service line and I refer my clients to them, I have many contractors that don't need to go out to the public because they get fed so much. So mm -hmm. the loyalty to me is they generate what they expect to deliver to the client so that the client is always happy. 
Um, also, not to sound greedy, but let's be honest here, they don't get paid until I do the job. So they're not going to want to spread this out to a bunch of different real estate agents. Um, I will tell you that majority of the time, my attorneys, if they come to the table, the executors with an agent, he will basically steer them away from it. Wow. Yep. And a lot of times what he'll do is he puts me on speakerphone during their consultation and we knock it out right then and there. That is so good. I love that. Yeah. But you have that. to be on the lookout. I mean, when he comes calling, even if I'm in an appointment, I have to say, we need to pull out for a little bit or go look at this for a little bit. And I need to take that call. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean that I interrupt the appointment. You want to stay professional, but at the same token, I am at their beck and call. And that is something that I deliver yeah. with my pitch of results. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. If anybody has any more questions for Jeff, Jeff, thank you for sharing all that. Every time I hear you talk about this, it makes Sarah I always, I'm like, man, like I, we have to, go, we got to go find an attorney because <laughs> I just think that's something anybody can do yet. It is definitely relationship building and hard work, but yeah. it has paid off extremely, extremely well for you. Can I add one more thing before I let yes, you Yes, absolutely. So in I terms of like I call it a spider web, the biggest thing that you have to think of is if you don't want to go the attorney route, just go with your service providers just as a baseline platform. So in terms of like even my cleaning crews, if someone calls them in for a consultation yep. and they talk about moving, I get that referral right then and there. Um, yep. In terms of just accountants or financial planners, whatever the case may be, these are all individuals that, that have some type of conversation about real estate. And when they get in front of that professional and you're getting the direct referral, it's so much stronger than it is to, okay, go off on your own and figure it out. Um, the investor market for me as well with probate, I used to get, and these were price points that are much lower. Some of them are. Um, so whenever I get the investor calls, they get into a database. And now I basically provide the list. I get a month early before I list these opportunities to an entire mm. investor pool. Wow. And they come swarming to me as well. So wow, there's that's always great. leverage to be done with one particular transaction. I, I think a lot of people are short-sighted with that and you just need to be a little bit more purposeful with what you can do to maximize yeah. that ability. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much, Jeff. Absolutely. And actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you answer Tracy's question in the chat because <laughs> it's the yeah. question everyone asks you all the time. <laughs> I'm terrible at these chats though, but I will do my best. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. You're awesome. I appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay, I know we're running late. However, Ken will bring the heat. So, um, and he's got the lights too. So Ken, um, I feel like you need no introduction because I just love, thank you for always saying yes when I ask you to speak to people. You're just, of course. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thanks so, for having me. Tell them a little bit about yourself. I, I I know most people know Ken moved to Orlando and didn't know a soul. And uh, today, well, a month ago, you you all had already closed 300 units year to date, right? Yeah, yeah. Cl closing pending. So we're up at a hot 319 now oh. closing pending. So um, yeah, we should we should do something like uh, 225 million this year. Um, a lot of it is from just the media and content that we've put together. And so, um, yeah, I moved here just uh, just six years ago now. And so like last week it was six years and um, <laughs> didn't know anybody and just kind of went off of um, the whole agent referral database that I had built and said, hey, listen, I was in Detroit. I was an agent. Now I live in Orlando. I'm still an agent. And, um, you know, refer me if you can. <laughs> and then along the way, we figured out YouTube and then kind of started growing this team. So, um, yeah, it's been a quick six years, but we're excited with where we're headed. So I definitely want everybody to hear that six, only six years. And he didn't know one person and 225 million in volume this year. So that's insane. Yeah, I know. I see Roger and Jeff and Robin are all like, holy crap. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so talk a little bit about uh, uh, YouTube. You, you just go, you, I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. So I, I think um, so many of us, it's so easy to get caught up in the whole, like, buying Zillow, buying realtor.com, buying whatever. Right. And we've, we've already heard today from some amazing people. So congrats to you, Dana, like setting up this lineup is some amazing people doing their own thing, building their own deal, right. Whether that's owning your attorney relationships, nobody like Zillow is not going to come disintermediate Jeff and his probate relationships. Yeah. Right. Nobody's yeah. going to like jump in on Roger and his farm. Right. So like for me, I was like, what, what can I build that I can own? I can control. I know the lead flow. I, I get to know, like, there's no, somebody going to take a referral fee. And so we built uh, essentially now this like media marketing company that we can control. We can kind of turn up the volume on leads, turn down based on how much content, how much retargeting and all that stuff. But really just basics. Like if, if you're watching this from like wanting to get started with YouTube, it's creating content that people are searching for organically. 
directly. It, it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with your viewer. So if someone's moving to Columbus, you're creating videos about moving to Columbus. It's the top five places to hang out in Columbus on weekends. It's the top five places for millennials to live. It's like, you know, whatever it might be uh, that people are searching for. And if you become kind of like the humble concierge or like the, the mayor of your town online, specifically YouTube, it's all very searchable. And then when the time comes, people are reaching out to you to buy and sell. So you never really posted real estate in the beginning. It was more like hyper local. Here's what to do in Orlando. So at the beginning, um, sorry, our lawn guys are here. Awesome, awesome living at home um, or working at home. Uh, so our, at first it was like model home tours, which is definitely a way you could go. It's just such a such a niche market where you're or niche market. I think we were arguing about this earlier. Um, so yes. <laughs> So we were doing builder home tours and we were getting some leads, but there's just how many people are looking at Orlando new construction in the city for that one model. It was just a very small, small thing. So I, I opened up our faucet a little bit and I started looking at, okay, let's go more, more lifestyle driven, um, but still Orlando focused. And that's really when things started cranking. Okay. And then I remember, I want to share really fast. I just want to share. So all of you guys that are watching, you can go get ideas, but more than importantly, go, don't judge me from my tabs. I know somebody's about to say that. Go, um, go look similar. You can find, I actually just cleaned them up last night too, really, to be honest. So, um, go, you can go follow Ken. So Ken, you're at 29,000 subscribers now, which is amazing. And I know we've talked a ton about, uh, thumbnails and like they need to see your eyeballs and like the big white all of those things but I think didn't didn't you kind of like go it went nuts when you did Shaq's house if I remember like a year ago I feel like that's when it was like holy crap yeah yeah so it was um yeah I feel like we you know last year at this time I was at 8,000 subscribers and then like I just really have been hacking the algorithm on like searchability and really understanding like what people are looking for and so um if you're again if you're watching this you're starting out so I would say think about um creating two or three buckets this is actually the, this is how I think we're starting to have faster and faster success think about two or three buckets and so you're going to consistently shoot you know say say like every other week you're going to shoot a living two or moving in video, moving to Columbus, moving to Cincinnati, like whatever that might be and, and what those things look like. And then secondarily, I would shoot something that says like coming to Columbus or four things coming to Columbus or four things coming to Cincinnati. And essentially you're going to tell the news. So from your perspective, perspective as a realtor. So today I'm going live at six o'clock and I'm talking about four things coming to Orlando. One of them is a new Tesla dealership in this one area that nobody would think a Tesla dealership should go, but they're building out this massive dealership. And, and why is that? And so I'm going to talk about the real estate in the area and what's that going to do for homeowners in the area and all of those kind of things. And so what, what amazingly happens is like now your channel becomes a resource for people considering yeah. moving there. And it's also a resource for people that already live there. So now you're getting buyer leads and listing leads. Okay. Wait, were there three buckets? Oh, was it moving to living in and coming to? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that like you could, those, those are the, the, the three that I would kind of go back and forth with. Love that. Okay. So then how active are you on other platforms like Instagram, Facebook, whatever, I don't know, TikTok or Snapchat. I, Abby has to keep me in the loop with all those, but, <laughs> or do you like solely focus YouTube? So I, I have a very active Instagram. I think I've got 8,500 followers over there. And the only re that started growing when I started on YouTube saying, hey, by the way, if you're interested in sort of like my daily insights into Orlando, you want to follow along with my stories, follow me on Instagram. And so what's incredible is that people will watch me on YouTube, subscribe, but then they'll follow me on Instagram and then they'll message me on Instagram. Hey, we found you on YouTube. I've been following you for the past year. My husband and I were moving to Orlando. We want to use your team. Who do we use? And wow. so I'll literally screen scrout that, send it to my ISA and then we convert it. And then do you ever find that they, um, how, how are they about wanting to work with Ken versus the rest of your team? Yeah. So that, that was a script that we we've cultivated over the past two years specifically. And so usually the intake call is like, um, oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Thank you for following along on our channel. Tell me about you. Like, so why Orlando or why are you thinking about selling? Let's get into some motivation here. Where, where do you want to live? What's your price point? And then they'll just like a normal buyer consult, like for five or 10 minutes, like high level buyer consult, our ISAs do. 
And then at the end, they say, you know who I think Ken would want you to work with is Brianna because Brianna oh, specializes. Yeah, right. Brianna specializes in short-term Airbnbs and she's Ken's partner in that area. So when can she reach out? And so 90% of the time that does it. Like it's a nice warm handoff. The agents love it because it's a, a ready to go lead. You know, they're not having to do the 10 days of pain They're, You know, it's literally people that have reached out to work with us. Um, and then that 10% that are like, well, wait a minute, I really wanted to work with Ken. Like, where's Ken? And, and they'll say, you know, Ken still sells real estate all the time, but he's booking up months in advance at this point, And we really want to take care of you today. So again, his best partner would be geo in that area. Right. And, and most of the time that does it. Love that. That's a great script. You know who I think Ken would want you to work with. I love that. That is super good. Love that. Love that. Okay. So I know we have to go. I know you have to go. I want to be respectful of the time. This is, I need to have like two hours on these things. Um, so what tip Ken would you give somebody that's looking to start? And also how do you feel about people that don't want to do video in the future? Yeah, I think um, I think video is the way where all of us are going, and so I mean it's 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 not it's not where we're going. It's actually here, and and if you're not starting today or this week, you're going to sort of lift, get left behind. And so I think that two things, mindset wise, you can own this asset where instead of renting someone else's business because that's what you're doing when you're buying leads. So yeah. get started. And two, all of us, um, we we started you know open houses. We all sucked at open houses the first yeah. time we did it, right? Like it was awkward you're asking people to check in, you're following them around. It was really weird, but eventually you got better at it. Right. And so video is the exact same thing. The more you do, the better you get. And so just get started and it'll, it'll work out. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Any, if anybody has any questions for Ken, now's the time speak now or forever, hold your peace. Look at Tyler on. Oh my gosh. In my office. What's up Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I knew someone was going to ask this. Okay. Last one, essential equipment for videos. Gosh, there's so many, anything, any cheap tool or like quick thing that you would say is a must. Um, I would buy a gimbal. And if you're, I would just start with your cell phone. You do not need to go buy some ma massively expensive gear to start, just get started with what you already have. But a gimbal will kind of create that smooth cinematic look. Um, and I would just get out turn the camera on you and start talking about your town. Hey, here's the five reasons why I freaking love living in Cincinnati. And you start going through it. Um, that's significantly easy for everybody to do. Yeah. And Ken, I feel like in the beginning, when you started always talking to like any, everybody feels awkward looking at themselves on camera and talking yeah. to, I mean, but you like, I, I like more of the organic, like the, those are the ones that I watch, not somebody yeah. that's like perfected every single thing that they say. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't script anything. I, I bullet point it out. So I'm usually like intro, two or three points, outro, and I shoot them all individually. So don't feel like you need to talk for 10 minutes straight and yeah. never say like, um, uh, you can break it down and make it really easy on yourself. Oh, Chris Gorman with a good question. Okay. This really will be the last one resources to learn about searchability and algorithms. Uh, great question. So my favorite, my guru, my coach, his name is Daryl Eves and he gives away it's Daryl E V E S. He's like Mr. Beast's right-hand man as well. If you know, who Mr. Beast is massive YouTuber. Um, and he gives away like 90% of what you need to know for free on YouTube. So just go follow him. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. So for those that stayed late, you got the, you got the good, the gold and Rachel busted out the gimbal. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for sharing Jeff and Roger and Robin and Ken and Clay for being on vacation. And I'm just so glad um, that everybody got value added today. We had a ton of people on. So thank you guys. Um, and we'll send the recording and I'll send um, if you need anything, we'll send Robin's touch plan. <laughs> Uh, and we'll save the chat and link some of these things too and send in the follow-up email. So thank you guys for being on. Thank you guys for sharing and all that you do and just for your friendship. Love you guys. Have a great week. See ya. Bye. Uh -huh.